Forex markets, including indices, are driven by banks buying and selling those currencies. Institutional trading is what drives these massive pushes in the price. So in this video, I'm gonna discuss a very important topic that has definitely screwed a lot of you guys over as well as myself, and it's called a liquidity pool. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name's Artie and this is The Moving Average, a show where we discuss everything day trading to keep you profitable on a consistent basis. So if you guys have seen any of my other videos, I've mentioned this lightly before, especially in my trading double tops video. A lot of traders, especially new traders and even advanced traders, sometimes fall for the trap the break of a major support and resistance area, and then an immediate pullback, just screwing everybody over that doesn't have a stop loss. So let's jump into the charts and I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about and how to actually identify liquidity pools ahead of time. Okay, so I've got US 30 up here on the chart and basically what we need to do first is put up major support and resistance levels on a one hour time frame. You wanna do this on a higher time frame because on a lower time frame, those aren't major levels of support. It has to be on a higher time frame. So in order to do that, you guys know this, just make lines on the tops and bottoms of these moves. These areas right here where the price just abruptly stops is a major level of support and resistance. So make some lines on these peaks and valleys. You want these major ones where there's absolute pullback. These ones in the middle here, those are lighter areas of support and resistance. You can keep those in mind. If you do mark these up where there's big areas of consolidation and tiny little pullbacks, when you leave a line there, either make it thinner or change the color to let you know it's not a major line, but it's an area to keep in mind. So this is looking back about a month at the price action of US 30. I'm gonna show you two examples of a liquidity pool. So you have to understand one basic premise. In order for somebody to buy a lot of something, somebody else has to be selling a lot of something and vice versa. If somebody wants to sell something, there has to be a lot of buyers. That is liquidity. A large amount of liquidity is known as a liquidity pool. So above these zones right here that you just marked up, these big major ones where there's literally nothing living up here, this is a liquidity zone, as well as this area right here. The novice trader knows that when price has broken a previous level of resistance, it should continue up. Banks know that novice traders know this. So as price made this a previous level of resistance, and then a few days later it comes back up and breaks through it, and keep in mind, at one point this entire candle was a big fat green candle like this one. Once it started to break this line, people saw this big bullish momentum and started to buy in or already had buy orders set in place. But again, this area is now a liquidity pool, meaning there's a ton of buyers here trying to get this breakout trade. What happens when there's an excess of buyers? The sellers come in, big banks and institutional traders. They see this prime opportunity and so they do something like this. They pull the price down and they make it range, wicking up and down, giving these people that bought right here at this breakout kind of like a false sense that the price actually might come back up. I'm just gonna wait it out. And then subsequent bearish candle, big fat bearish candles. And this is literally just taking out stop loss after stop loss after stop loss, margin calling everybody's account until it's absolutely horrendous. This is why you need to exercise extreme caution when dealing with any type of breakout scenario you have to understand where the liquidity is. You need to be able to spot it at all times and always keep that in mind, especially if you're scalping on a smaller time frame like the one minute or five minute, keeping in mind these big liquidity pool levels, that's gonna be massively important because I guarantee you if you zoom this into a one minute time frame, this looked amazing for a long position. Now again, as the price came all the way down here, at one point, this entire candle was humongous and red. Everybody started to sell, thinking it was gonna keep going down, maybe even to this area. Then big banks and financial institutions come in and just punch everybody right in the face. 
Price swings up like crazy, hitting everybody's stop losses, getting those margin calls until the banks have had enough of your money and it starts to consolidate again. I cannot stress this enough, doing markups on a one hour time frame or a four hour time frame and getting to know your zones and liquidity pool areas to completely avoid at all costs. That's one of the first things that you should do when you get on the charts. Now that you know this information, how can you get on the side of the banks? You wait for the big banks, you know, they get in the ring and they start swinging, then they start taking everybody down and you see these big momentum moves. You see that that was a liquidity pool. You see the price dropping. Now you know what the bank is planning. You can get on board with the bank and follow their trade as long as you feel comfortable with or until you see that next liquidity pool. Even if you got in on this trade right here with these big fat bearish momentum candles, you could have still gotten a 600 point move on US 30. Now let me put that in perspective. With my broker, a 0.01, that would have profited me $600. A 0.10, $6,000, and one standard lot, $60,000 on this one trade. Just by riding the coattails of these big momentum moves by big banks. So this is not a specific strategy video, it's just something that you should always keep in mind when doing any of your analysis. If you know this information and you know what liquidity pools are and you know where to find them and you can watch what the banks are doing, that's gonna be your aha moment, your big click that, oh, I see this now and this is gonna make you very profitable. So if you guys wanna learn how to do this in depth and trading double tops and double bottoms and support and resistance areas, check out this video that I did right here with RSI divergence on a double top. And if you guys got some value out of this video and you like the way that I teach, make sure you're subscribed to the channel by clicking this button right here. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name's, no, that was dumb.